Joe Biden just admitted what the U.S. demonization campaign about China is really about. The U.S. has always maintained that its constant China bashing is about its concern for human rights and democracy. But in Joe Biden's first press conference, he said what no other U.S. president has said publicly, which is that the U.S. war on China is really about GDP and power, not democracy or human rights. They have an overall goal to become the leading country in the world the wealthiest country in the world and the most powerful country in the world. That's not gonna happen on my watch. Now, for those of us who have been saying this, that's no big revelation. But for the President of the United States to publicly acknowledge the real motive of this anti-China crusade is significant. Maybe that's the benefit of having a president who famously goes off script. I mean, sometimes he just lets a little too much truth slip out. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn blonde in the sun. That being said, China's rise is indisputable, and it's the height of hypocrisy to make that rise seem like some pernicious plot to take over the world. So let's rewind a bit. For decades, the US power structure didn't see China as a threat at all. China was talked about like it was just some massive sweatshop or just a consumer market and not a country that's home to over a billion people and thousands of years of culture. With China, the US wanted to have their cake and eat it too. They wanted it to generate super profits and cheap goods to help keep the global capitalist system afloat without having to contend with China as a political power in its own right. Driven by profits, the US and its multinational corporations were given access to China's pool of cheap labor, but only on the basis that those companies would have to share their technology with China. China signed hundreds of these technology sharing agreements, not just with the US, but with other trade partners as well, which helped rapidly develop China's manufacturing and tech sectors. This is what the US is retroactively calling technology theft. China was determined not to be a low-wage country dependent on Western investment forever. In addition to these technology transfers, the Chinese government began investing in its own indigenous high technology. This is how a company like Huawei that was virtually unheard of in most of the world 10 years ago could go on to become the world's largest smartphone manufacturer, larger than both Apple or Samsung. This is why China is beating the United States in the 5G race. This is why China is dominating electric vehicle production and why the US has fallen way behind in the race to develop artificial intelligence. This is ultimately why China's economy is on pace to overtake the US economy in size by 2028. In 2022, China will enter the ranks of the world's high-income economies. The significance of this achievement can't be overstated for a country who, in 1949, was the world's 11th poorest country. This is what Joe Biden and the US security state consider absolutely unacceptable. China is beating the United States at its own game. And like a child who flips the table over when they lose a board game, the United States would rather subject the world to a new Cold War than conceding that it's no longer the world's most powerful country. Don't believe me? Well, check out this declassified document from the Trump administration saying exactly that. On the first page, one of the key goals is advancing U.S. global economic leadership and U.S. primacy in the Asia Pacific. Their aim is for the countries in the Asia Pacific to partner with the U.S. instead of China, cutting China off from trade partners and diplomatic ties, ultimately isolating them from the rest of the world. The document states that the U.S. intends to do this by enlisting the help of regional powers, specifically India, Japan, and Australia, to form an anti-China bloc. And just this past week, this so-called quad, a loose formation of these four countries, met to discuss the possibility of this anti-China bloc. So when Biden says that he's not going to allow China to become the world's largest economy on his watch, we should take him seriously. The US military wouldn't massively increase its presence in the Asia Pacific if it didn't consider a shooting war with China in the realm of possibilities. The capitalist class of the United States is threatening to drag the whole world into a conflict which would almost certainly be devastating for everyone living on this planet. They'll try to say it's just about democracy, it's just about human rights, but at the end of the day, just remember Biden's words. This is a war that only benefits the biggest multinational corporations in this country, but the rest of us have nothing to gain, and we have to make it absolutely clear to the world that the people of the United States reject this escalation of conflict with China with a clear and unified no.